happens. <laughs> and you keep doing this, and they so wouldn't the quarks eat the entire gravitational field of the black hole. Yeah. And that you wouldn't have a black hole left, you just have a ball of quarks. You have to realize, number one, that we still don't know the under uh, the physics of the singularity of a black hole well enough. Why else did I invite yeah. you into this yeah. office now? So, so well, I wish <laughs> one day, one Dude, day I pray that I'll sit the, here and the, tell you what happens at the singularity of a black hole. Bring the person who knows yeah. next time. But here's the thing, there is nobody on planet Earth who knows the answer, unfortunately, yet. So why, if matter often stiffens as you squeeze it, and the strong interaction confines quarks, yet weakens at very short distances, doesn't that inner resilience claw back a collapsing star and unmake the black hole from within? We're trained to think of nature as a contest of forces. Push with gravity, push back with pressure, wait to see who wins. A spoon bends, a spring compresses, a star rests its own fall with the quantum refusal of electrons to share the same seat. But black holes betray us by changing the game mid-play. The moment a horizon forms, you haven't just compressed matter, you've changed space-time itself. And that upends the very idea that a pressure inside can negotiate with the sky outside. Follow the way nature escalates. A modest star collapses until electrons say no. That's a white dwarf. Make it heavier and the electrons get outvoted. Neutrons take the post, stacking themselves into a neutron star with a crust that could etch a diamond pile on even more mass, and you enter a regime where neutrons can't keep their identity. Quarks may roam free in a dense sea, form in phases with exotic names like color-flavor-locked matter. Doesn't asymptotic freedom hint that quarks, when forced into tight quarters, interact less and might provide less resistance just when you need more? Gravity, meanwhile, has no saturation point. There's a limit, the tolman oppenheimer folkoff threshold beyond which no known equation of state will halt the fall. You don't get a denser star, you get a new causal structure. That detail is crucial. The appearance of a trapped surface means not merely more collapse, but no outward escape, not even for light. We tend to picture the black hole as a ball of stuff exerting an external pull, but gravity, in Einstein's telling, is less a force tugging from within and more the curvature of the stage upon which everything moves. The mass of the hole isn't a stash of particles at the center. It's a measurement you can make far away, reading the bending of orbits and the dilation of time. Charges and spin are accessible to distant observers. Specifics of the innards are not. This is the spirit of the no-hair results. The hole presents a minimal resume to the universe. If that's true, then the idea of quarks eating the gravity confuses categories. Gravity here is geometry. You can consume crumbs, you can't nibble the shape of the room you're in. Inside the horizon, world lines inevitably lead deeper in. Whatever microphysics unfolds, they're sealed off by causality. That doesn't answer what becomes of the core, but it reframes what influence even means once the horizon exists. Now, quantum fields complicate the picture in an unexpected way. While nothing classically escapes, the vacuum itself doesn't sit idle at the edge. The horizon forces a kind of bookkeeping of entanglement. Pairs of quanta peel off the vacuum, with one partner trapped, the other slipping away. To a patient observer, the black hole glows. Its temperature is colder for heavier holes and hotter for lighter ones. Its entropy, an astronomical count of possible microstates, scales with the area of the horizon, not the volume you might have imagined filled with rearrangeable stuff. That area law whispers a radical idea. The information content of what falls in may be stored on the boundary. Holography isn't a metaphor here. It's a working principle in many corners of theoretical physics. If the degrees of freedom that characterize the whole are encoded at the horizon, then interior quark dynamics aren't playing tug-of-war with an external gravitational field. They're participating in a much larger ledger of entanglement whose entries determine the whole's fate. Of course, this neat account stumbles at the last step, as all good frontiers do. If the whole radiates, does it erase the details of what formed it? The deep conflict between unitary quantum evolution and the seemingly featureless nature of black hole evaporation forced us to rethink what inside and outside even mean. Proposals abound. Complementarity, which suggests that no single observer witnesses a contradiction. Firewalls, which challenge the smoothness of the horizon. Soft hair, subtle imprints in the gravitational field at infinity. Dualities where a black hole is equivalent to a thermally excited quantum system with no gravity at all. 
Some scenarios soften the singularity into a bounce or connect it via non-traversable tunnels to distant regions, trading the sharp point of infinite density for new topology. But notice the common thread. The horizon's causal role remains king. None of these ideas grant quark matter the power to send a cancellation notice to infinity once the horizon is drawn. There's also the time dilation that misleads our intuition. From the vantage of a distant watcher, infalling matter asymptotically slows and reddens as it approaches the horizon. You never quite see it cross. In practice, accretion disks glow furiously and jet structures scream in radio waves, but the actual crossing is an ever-receding act. For the traveler plunged inward, the crossing is swift, and pressure gradients or phase transitions may indeed blossom. Those transitions could be dramatic. They could be beautiful. They could even remove the classical singularity at the end of the line, yet the traveler's verdict cannot broadcast outward. The geometry forbids it. When you ask whether inner pressures can reverse the story, you're asking whether local processes can overturn a global boundary. That's like asking a page of a book to reprint the cover while the book is already closed. So what then can shrink a horizon? Only quantum channels that actually remove mass energy from the whole itself. Classically, horizons do not contract. During formation, gravitational waves can shed a symmetry and reduce the mass that becomes the whole. But once a horizon exists, they cannot drive its area down. After formation, Hawking radiation leaks energy slowly, glacially for stellar mass holes, quickening only near the final stages of evaporation. This raises the philosophical payoff. We like to think that to understand a thing is to look inside it. Black holes invert that habit. They are defined from the outside by what cannot be seen within. Their identity is stamped on their boundary, and their timekeeping is set by the curvature they impose on distant clocks. In a universe where information and geometry dance together, a black hole is less a bag of particles than a special state of space-time. A thermal object whose microscopic degrees of freedom are, by all signs, arrayed on its edge. That's why they're such merciless auditors of sloppy thinking. They force us to respect the difference between local stories and global constraints. So, why doesn't the grid of quarks overthrow the abyss and dismantle the black hole from the inside? Because once the horizon forms, the black hole isn't a horde of particles flexing against a force. It's a global geometric condition whose properties are fixed by what's measurable at a distance. Internal pressures may alter the interior narrative, perhaps even resolving the singularity, but they cannot send a signal outward to erase the horizon. The only way a black hole recedes is by exporting energy to the exterior, through gravitational waves during its birth and through Hawking radiation across eons. Quarks don't eat gravity. Gravity rewrites the stage and the actors behind the curtain can't rewrite the script for the audience beyond. Like if this was interesting and hit the subscribe for more.